So let's check some dimensions. All right, let's start off with width, head corner to head corner. Looks like we're right about, right about 26, maybe just a hair under from corner to corner right here. Now the height, that looks to be right around, right around 26 also. Let's take a look at, uh, take a look at the length of this thing. We're looking at right around 24. All right. All right, so the height of the Hemi, 26. Width of the valve covers, also 26. Bottom of the oil pan to the top of the alternator and the AC pump, right around the same level, at around 20, I'll call it 25, just a 25 length. Oops, now it's not there. 26 inches. All right, now we have this bad boy. So valve cover to valve cover, we're looking at about, looks like maybe closer to like 22. 22 inches. Yeah, the Hemi is definitely a little bit more like V-shaped. All right, 22 inches. Call that. Height of the intake. I'll go down to the front bottom of the oil pan, which seems to hang down about the same amount. Just shy of 25. Front to back. And I'll go right to that front engine cover, so we're kind of comparing them. That's at about, so about 22. Uh, you know what, maybe a little longer. Nope, I'll call that 24. All right, so. For the 360 intake heights, 25 inches. 25 inches. Width, 22, and then front to rear. Is that 20, 24? 24 inches. Okay. So it looks like what we need is top. We need plus one inch. And that will be right uh, above where the intake is now. Uh, the width, we need a good four inches. Front to rear, I think, is okay, but we'll... We'll do uh, an additional two inches. So given our measurements, I think the front to rear is going to be okay. You can see that we're not right up on the firewall here. I think we have a couple of uh, inches at least. Uh, a good four inches away from the firewall there. And on the front, 10 inches from the radiator. And, you know, we have options with radiators and, and electric fans and things like that if we need to. So. Now the width, you know, this engine bay was designed to fit the big blocks and even the 426 Hemi, so width-wise we actually have quite a bit of room too. Uh, and we're only looking at four total inches wider, so that's two on each side. I'm not too sure about the headers though, I know that's going to be the biggest problem here. I do have the power steering box, which I want to keep. Um, I guess we'll just see when the time comes how the headers fit. I mean, headers never fit anyway, so. As far as the front, uh, alternator and AC pump, I'm not so sure because I do have this bar here which seems to come down somewhere in that area there, but it is up past the hood level so we might be okay. I do have these two paint can tops here which are each two inches so it looks like we're only one inch taller on the Hemi. So I'm gonna try and shut the hood and we'll see if those things hit. All right, it's kind of hard to tell, but we're about an inch up in the front here, but the back is pretty flat. And if you look back in there, you can just make out the paint can top. And it does look like we have about, I wanna say about half an inch of clearance, maybe an inch even. So I think we're okay in the back. The front paint can lid is, I think that is touching, but that is pretty far forward. So we might be okay there, but the hood definitely does slope down here a bit so that one's going to be a question but you know actually that front height was 20 
25, not 26. I'm confident. 75% confidence. Caught you glancing over my way. No girl had looked at me like that before. Even though I knew who your name, we had some time to catch up. I know that you know. I figured you out. Took me a while, but I got there somehow. Conversation, mixed emotions. I made my move without a doubt. Last forever the taste of your lips The beat of your heart I feel you breathing I breathe out We took it slow Now I'll take it faster Don't feel the passion inside you now oh. All right, there she is Looks pretty good Looks pretty, pretty, pretty good. Uh, oil pan looks good too. Oil looks pretty clean. No, you know, metal shavings or any problems there. Uh, yeah, I think we'll be okay. So I'm not quite sure about replacing the timing chain on this guy. Uh, obviously timing chains last a little bit longer than, well, a lot longer than belts do. Uh, and this motor only has around 100,000 miles on it, so it's probably still in good shape. Um, I've, I don't think I'm gonna be making the power to warrant, you know, some like whatever double roller. Although some people suggested upgrading to the 6.1 SRT8 um, timing chain tensioner. Uh, supposedly it has a few more leafs in here to make it a little bit stronger, but I don't know, maybe let me know what you think. I do kind of want to stick with OEM Mopar parts for this, um, but Melling, I think, and a few others make timing chain kits, which are, I think, around like 80 or 90 bucks, so, you know, I guess that's some good insurance. But, you know, this stuff adds up, and it's, you know, 80 here, 90 here, whatever, and uh, before you know it, you're spending thousands and throwing away perfectly good components, so I think I'll probably reuse this guy. Wow, just like 15 minutes later and these things are looking awesome. Look at that perfect texture. It's like a good, like, good old school looking valve cover. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I know I was thinking about painting these orange, but I don't know, that black is looking deadly. I think I might just keep that black. 
MSD does make these orange coil packs that replace the black ones, which I think on these black valve covers look awesome, but I think they're like 500 bucks. Today's a good day. We're finally gonna upgrade this camshaft. I uh, got all the parts I need, all of the uh, valve train stuff I need to upgrade with the cam, and uh, got that valve spring tool in the mail. We're gonna use that valve spring tool to first remove each valve spring. Uh, I'm gonna replace the uh, valve stem seals while I'm in there and replace the push rods. And then I'll uh, finally replace the valve spring with these new uh, 6.1 SRT8 Hemi valve springs. I'm also gonna have to remove the timing set. I'm gonna try this without removing the cylinder heads. The only sort of thing to be careful about when doing it this way is to uh, make sure a lifter doesn't fall into a cylinder. But I'm gonna go ahead and just flip this engine upside down. All right, I can't wait. Let's do it. All right, well, some kind of bad news here. It looks like this front cam bearing here, it uh, has this pretty gnarly groove in it. There's also this corresponding gouge out of the front of the camshaft here too. So I don't know what happened. I guess maybe something got in there and cut the groove. And um, the good news is the other cam bearings do seem to be okay. Um, definitely no grooves uh, on the camshaft too. There's no other gouges, uh, which is good because I suspect this one has got to be the easiest one to take out. So. I've never done a cam bearing myself, but I do know that they require a special tool and that it's not something that's wise to do yourself. So I'll probably call a machine shop in the morning and see what it's gonna take to get this thing replaced. You know, in the meantime, I, I think I uh, might just go ahead and take these cylinder heads off. You know, it'll be good to get a look on the inside of the engine, you know, check out the cylinders and we'll be able to clean the cylinder heads real good, you know, clean the valves and all that stuff. All right, let's get to it. bit of good news. Uh, looks like the cylinders are in really good condition. Uh, no ring ridge or anything like that. They're all perfectly smooth. Just a little bit of uh, 
buildup on the tops of the cylinders, which are on the tops of the pistons here, which is to be expected. So that's good. Uh, one thing that's interesting though, I noticed this uh, water passage here in the back was completely full of gunk. And it's actually the same on the other side too. Let me take a look, maybe even a little bit worse. Oh yeah, look at that. That's crazy. I don't know what happened there, if like that's a place that maybe gunk collects. I noticed that the uh, coolant that I pulled out of this engine was a little bit sort of rusty. And it seems like from the factory they used these radiator hoses that had a like a metal coil in them to kind of keep their shape and they were all like uh, rusting out and deteriorating so I think that Dodge's own radiator hoses were you know clogging up its own engine so I'm actually pretty glad that I took the heads off because that gives me an opportunity to completely clear that out. Cylinders all look good on the side too no issues no ring ridge I think we're looking pretty good.